Hello guys, I want us to talk about decline curve analysis this year for short, like I promised in my uh, last video. I mean, that video has been posted for quite a while now, but you know how these things work. When you don't have time, you probably will not be able to do anything meaningful. I mean, um, when it comes to making YouTube videos, creating YouTube videos are actually I don't know they can be tedious sometimes especially when you really want to add good value i hope you understand actually um there's a lot more to talk about apart from decline curve analysis now that i am back but this dca series is long overdue if you agree it is meant to be a short one so we should get done with it as soon as possible so that we can move on to something else so i think we should um, do an introduction first before we go deeper into decline curve analysis the oil and gas industry is a huge business and it requires enormous capital to finance projects now something of a more concern is making investment in oil and gas assets it comes with a lot of uncertainties well this is the same thing with uh, many other businesses actually but it is a little bit different on the side of oil and gas investments because we are dealing with what no one gets to see hydrocarbon which is buried way deep into the subsurface sometimes up to 10,000 feet into the earth so the first challenge normally is to confirm if there is actually hydrocarbon resources down there in the ground then if we confirm that how much of this oil and gas do we have there the geology and exploration side of things in the oil and gas industry normally handles that process and that is not so much of our concern in this lesson really what they basically do is that they provide answers to the question what amount of oil is sitting in the reservoir rock which is located in the ground i mean they deploy a lot of technology and sciences to deliver these results now the volume of oil which is originally sitting in the reservoir at the time of discovery and exploration is called ooip OIP basically stands for original oil in place. I mean, we're going to keep that name for simplicity. Now, as an engineer, as a petroleum engineer, you know that not all of this OIP volume can be taken out of the reservoir. I mean, just a fraction of the total volume is actually recoverable, say between 15% to 60%. And that entirely depends on the type of geology of the rock, the type of fluid which is sitting in that rock, and of course, the management techniques, the management technology that has been deployed to recover this hydrocarbon. Now, this recoverable oil or hydrocarbon volume that can actually be taken out of the reservoir is the basis for any investment in the oil and gas industry. And that's quite logical. The recoverable oil volume is referred to as reserves. According to the Petroleum Resources Management System, PRMS, reserves are those quantities of petroleum which is anticipated to be commercially recoverable by application of development projects to known accumulations from a given date forward under defined conditions. Now that's a lot of grammar. Oil reserves are simply estimates of the amount of crude that can be recovered economically. And the oil reserves must have the potential of being extracted using existing uh, technology, known technology. That's what um, all of those uh, grammar is referring to. Now, this is only a simple insight into what reserve is, more like a summary. Sometimes the topic can be actually more detailed 
And this is to emphasize how much importance the terminology reserves has on investment decision. So for further reference, I have attached a copy of the PRMS document to this video. It can be downloaded using this link. You can also find this link in the description section right below this video. And a lot of our discussion in this series will be connected to reserves. I've said that earlier. Now, before I finally end this uh, introductory video, I'd like to pinch a little bit more on reserves. Once again, reserves are recoverable oil and gas volumes, which can be extracted using known technology. Now, when a well is drilled into a new reservoir, oil will begin to flow up to the surface. This is possible because the reservoir has what is called a primary energy, a drive mechanism that helps to bring hydrocarbons to the surface. It may be oil, it may be gas, it may be condensate, whatever. But when I say oil, I am referring to hydrocarbons. Now, this primary energy is also called drive mechanism, which we can have a couple of them can have gas dissolved in oil, referred to as solution gas drive, can have um, a gas cap or free gas. We have the aquifer or water in flux, if you like. We have gravity drive. Sometimes we can have a combination of at least two of um, these methods. So for a solution gas drive, you can recover up to five to 30% of your original oil in place for a gas cap drive that value will increase to about 20 percent to 40 percent water drive has the highest which gives you between 35 percent and 70 percent then for gravity is the lowest and that one can give you between 5 and 20 percent sometimes 25 percent now, if you look at your production trend, I mean, if you plot your production profile, you will be able to determine to an amount of accuracy level, the type of drive mechanism that a reservoir has. We're going to talk more about this information as we go on in this series. Now, if secondary recovery technology is deployed, the reserve that you'll be expecting may increase to about 80%. Examples of secondary technology that we have may include gas lifts, water flooding, gas injection, uh, pumps such as ESP, and so on. Now, to calculate your recovery factor, which is RF for short, you're going to sum your recovery factor resulting from your primary drive mechanism with your recovery factor resulting from the secondary drive mechanism. So from this equation, we have RF equal to RF subscript P plus RF subscript S. So finally, you'll be able to estimate your reserve from uh, this uh, equation by multiplying your OOIP by the uh, recovery factor that you have computed from this equation above. Now, this method is called the volumetrics method of estimating reserve. There are a couple more uh, methods that can be used to estimate reserves, which we are going to look at in lesson two.